Greetings, dearly beloved. I'm Pastor Johnny, and God bless each and every one of you. Welcome this morning to our live stream. Those of you watching by Facebook Live, uh, we invite you to put some comments there and some likes and share. And those who are watching by YouTube, we're glad that you joined us as well. Our pastors are online to answer your questions and to welcome you. We are glad that you joined us today. Of course, we are in lockdown and uh, we are looking forward to the day where we can come together in worship again. Now, there are those who are standing opposed to our government and complaining and saying that we should not be in lockdown and that they are targeting the church unfairly. And of course, we can see they allow the casinos, but not the church. And there's little inconsistencies like that. But uh, we are convinced that our government is not against the church. This is not a plot against the church. They are trying to help this nation through a pandemic. And uh, as believers, as the church, we should stand with our government and we should hold their hand and make it easy for them and believe God together as a nation that this pandemic will soon be over, that God will stretch out his hand and heal our nation and bless our government and give them wisdom and provide for us. For those who are waiting for the vaccine, some want to take it, some don't want to take it. That is a case of your personal preference. But I want you to know, church, that as soon as we can get together, we will do so again. We will be together in worship, and uh, we're looking forward to that time. Now, there are those who are asking about the 21-day fast, the 21-day corporate fast. And I think the key is that word, corporate fast. Uh, we are looking forward to fast together for 21 days corporately. And uh, so when the lockdown's over and we are back together, we'll immediately set aside a time to pray and to fast corporately. But starting from tomorrow, we are setting aside 21 days of meditation on the blood of Jesus. And I'm going to be ministered daily to you through our WhatsApp platform, uh, the DCC family chat for those in the different platforms, Wentworth, Finland's Bluff. I'll be daily uh, bringing a meditation on the blood of Jesus. And we're going to stand in that covenant and apply the precious blood of Jesus in faith as we believe God for each and every one of you to be healed, to be made whole, to experience a year of divine blessing. Hallelujah. We love each and every one of you today. We are praying for you. And I know God's hand is on you, our dear church. Now, saints, I've got a good word for you today. Hallelujah. And I've entitled my message today. Are you ready? Clothed in favor. Clothed in favor. Jacob's coat was a coat of many colors. And I want you to take your Bibles and read out of Genesis chapter 37 and verse 3. Genesis 37 and verse 3. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And his brethren saw that their father loved him more then all his brethren, and they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Of course, you and I learn from this that it's not good to favor our children. We are to love our children all the same and show each one the favor and the love of God because each one is unique. Not one is more special than the other. They are blessed of God. They are called of God. But for the sake of this message, we're going to look at the favor of Jacob towards his son Joseph. Because he loved his son so much, he made him a special garment. The father's favor made him spend time and preparation 
to make Joseph a coat unlike anybody else's, a coat of many colors. This uh, many colored cloak that Jacob prepared for his son Joseph was, of course, very expensive because colors were expensive in those days. And that's just like your garment of salvation. It's very expensive. In the book of 1 Peter 1 verse 18, we read, You were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Hallelujah. Jacob favored Joseph so much that he wanted everybody to know that Joseph is special. Hallelujah. Favor is grace. You are saved by grace. God's unmerited favor towards you. And you, dearly beloved, are special to God. Favor is God's divine desire. Listen to this. Favor is God's design, divine desire to bestow on you every heavenly blessing he had purchased for you in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And he will withhold no good thing from you in this year. Hallelujah. I've looked at the word favor and it means approval. Hallelujah. It means over generous preferential treatment. Hallelujah. It means acts of kindness beyond what is due. To be favored means the divine disposition to work things together for good. It means to tip the scales in your favor. Hallelujah. This year, I can see the hand of God on the scale tipping things in your favor. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, we notice that Joseph Coates had many colors, and uh, that spoke of the multidimensional blessing and the bright future that Jacob had in mind for Joseph. His father's favor and promise to bless him. It spoke of Jacob's desire to see Joseph succeed. And it spoke of his father's decision that Joseph should be his heir. I want you to know today that Satan desires to dress you in black, to drain the color out of our lives. Black is the absence of color. It's the absence of hope. It's the absence of joy. When your future is black, it means you've got nothing to look forward to. In fact, it means you don't know what's coming, but you, you, you feel like what is coming is not good. It fills you with dread. It means darkness and failure and curse and lack. And that is the work of the devil. Jesus said in John 10 verse 10, the devil comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, God loves you with an everlasting love. Hallelujah. And if God be for you, who can be against you? When you are favored, it means somebody thinks differently about you <laughs> and when that somebody is God you have it made come on I want you to say I have it made hallelujah when God thinks about you with favor you have it made today hallelujah you know God told the priests in the Old Testament they were his mouthpiece he said to them this is the way that I want you to bless the children of Israel. Let's read that in Numbers 6 verse 22. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the way 
that you will bless the children of Israel. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And so they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. God says, I will bless them. And so today I want you to know God says, I will bless you. I will bless you. God has purposed to bless you. And so I say to you today, as a king and a priest, to say these words to your family, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. I release grace in your family. Hallelujah. I release peace in your family. The countenance of the Lord be lifted over you with peace and with joy and with favor today. And God says, I put my name on you, dearly beloved, and I will bless you. Come on, I want you to say today, God will bless me in 2021. I will bless you. Glory to God. Thank God he is good to us. Satan and the world wants to condemn you, wants to curse you, wants to take away from you, wants you to lose hope in the beginning of this year and think, what am I going to do? I'm in the beginning of lockdown. What am I going to do? Listen, God can bless you in the middle of a lockdown. Joseph was locked down. He was in prison. That didn't stop God from promoting him, from favoring him, from blessing him, from opening a door for him. Hallelujah. God took him directly out of the prison and put him in a palace. The favor of God will do mighty things in your life. Hallelujah. The enemy wants to disqualify you. Those that are against you, wants your, you to lose your dream, lose your hope. Think to yourself, because you have failed, because you've not done well, that now it is over for you. Isn't it amazing how those who are against you are always talking about the history, some of you did in the past, all things are still holding against you. But thank God when we are saved. He removes our transgressions as far as the east is from the west. Hallelujah. He wipes the slate clean. His mercies are new every day. Hallelujah. And he determines to bless you. Glory to God. God is not dwelling in your past. God is not looking for last year for what he's going to do this year. God is not looking to how you perform. Listen. When we come to God, he wipes the slate clean and he speaks a word of life to you. He speaks a word of promise to you. He releases a blessing on you. God deals with you according to his glorious plan that he had for your life before the world began. He knew you before he formed you in your mother's womb. He created you for such a time as this. And he is at work to will and to do his good pleasure in your life. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29, 11, the Lord says this, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future. To give you a hope. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Joseph's brothers weren't thinking like that. They caught him. They stripped his garment off. They removed his garment from him. You know what they were trying to do by removing his garment? They were trying to take his dream away from him. They were trying to take the word that God had given him away from him. They were trying to, to destroy his future and saying, we're taking this garment away. They took that garment. They... They crushed that garment. They tore that garment. They put mud and uh, 
dirt over it and blood over it. And they, they took that garment and they said, Joseph is dead. It's over with Joseph. We won't hear from him again. He thought he will rule over us, but that's it. We have dealt with him. They thought he will never rise again. But I've got good news for you. God is not swayed and God is not moved by what others say about you, about others' opinion about you. I want to say to you, God doesn't accept other people's vision for your life. He doesn't change his mind concerning you. Other people's opinion is not God's opinion. Hallelujah. They say, well, well, you just Johnny. And, you know, we know your mother. We know your father. We know where you come from. Your education's not good enough. You are not going to make it. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you today, dearly beloved, that there is power in the name of Jesus. That there is hope in the name of Jesus. That there is peace in the name of Jesus. Other people's opinion will not sway God. God says, I will ch not change my mind about you. Glory to God. I want you to read with me out of Romans chapter 8 and verse 33. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect. It is God who justifies you. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God. Who shall make intercession for us? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. And verse 37, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Realize something today, dearly beloved, that Joseph had worn that coat of many colors for so long. He had been become used to people saying he is the favorite of, of his father. He is highly favored. He had worn it so long that it had, be, it, had, it had saturated his soul. It had gone down into his being and he started seeing himself as favored. He didn't need that garment anymore. Even though, though they took that garment away from him, favor had already saturated him. Hallelujah. The favor of his father had already convinced him and he walked around as the favorite of the Lord even when they put prison clothes on him. He walked around as favored. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that is how it is when the word of God drenches your life. Take the word of God. Put it on your outward. Put it on your mind. Meditate on it. Uh, let that word rest in you so long that it drops into your soul and you get saturated with the knowledge that God is for me. God is with me. God is working all things together for good for me. I am favored. I am blessed. Hallelujah. God will never leave me. God's hand is on me for good. No matter what our situation I walk into, He will turn this for my good. Hallelujah. He looks on me with divine favor. They might have removed your garment. They might have uh, uh, messed with your reputation, accused you to your boss, 
spoke badly to about you to other people around you saying we will never find a job again they might have sidelined you but i want you to know even when you in prison clothes god looks at you with favor there's favor on the inside of you hallelujah god's hand is on you even when you're hard pressed he is still blessing you even when you persecuted he is still watching over you to turn it for good glory to god the bible says even if we struck down we are not destroyed in a time where people are going through a hard time you know my wife and i both went through this coronavirus and while we were going through this that scripture was in our hearts that the same spirit that raised christ from the dead dwells in and quickens these mortal bodies hallelujah on the outside it was tough but on the inside there was the spirit of god at work his favor resting in us his call driving us on his spirit moving us and i want to tell you nothing can stop the will of god for your life nothing can stop the purpose of god in your life hallelujah I bless you in the name of Jesus. I want to read the scripture for you found in Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 1. And I want you to meditate on the scripture, dearly beloved. Isaiah 45 and verse 1. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held, to subdue nations before him, to loose the armor of kings, to open before him the double doors so that the gates will not be shut. I declare that the gates will not be shut on you. Double doors will be opened before you. So he says in verse 2, I will go before you and I will make the crooked ways straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and I will cut the bars of iron. That means everything the enemy did to stop you, to prevent you. God says, I will cut those bars. I will open those gates. I will cause the blessing to rest on you. And then verse 3, God says to you, I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches and secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by your name, am the God of Israel. I am your God. Listen, favor will always make you rise to the top. God worked in Joseph's life with favor despite every circumstance. And I declare today the favor of God rests on you to open double doors of opportunity, to break bars of iron, to open the gates. Hallelujah. To release on you provision and favor and blessing in 2021. When you are favored, no accusation can stand against you. Psalm 34 verse 22. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. When you are favored, God is your helper. Listen, you are favored from heaven. He is holding your right hand. In verse 9 of Isaiah 50, he says, Surely the Lord God will help me. Who is he who will condemn me? Another thing that I want to remind you of today is that when God favors you, he will cause others to favor you. He will bring you into open doors of opportunity. I want to read out of Daniel chapter 1 verse 9. It says, Now God had brought Daniel into the favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. God had brought him. And I declare in Jesus' name that God is taken by the right hand. He's going to bring you before great men. He's going to bring you into opportunities. He's going to bring you before 
business opportunities before uh, before uh, great people and he's going to open a door for you and cause them to favor you just like he did with Daniel listen to that again now God had brought Daniel into the favor and the goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs and in Jesus name this year God brings you into the favor and the goodwill of those who are in authority, of those who he has set there to be a blessing for your life. Hallelujah. So I declare today that this year is going to be a year of favor, a year of goodwill, a year of double doors open to you. A year that when you get to a place where there was obstruction, the bars have been cut, the gates have been opened, and favor has been placed on the hearts of those who you're going to meet so that you will have a great opportunity. Saints, this is your year for miracles. I declare over you a year of divine interventions, favorable outcomes, I declare over you a year in which the Lord God tips the scale. I can see his hand on the scale, tipping it for your advantage, for your benefit, for your favor. The Lord has placed his name on you, he declares, and God will bless you. I declare today over each and every one of you, the set time to favor you has come. Psalm 102 verse 13, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time is come in the name of Jesus. And so today, my dear church, I bless you in the name of Jesus. Today, I want you to open your heart to God and receive this word of favor. Because even now, as I speak this, I see for those who don't have jobs, I see jobs opening before you. For those of you who need business contracts, the bars of iron are being cut. Hallelujah. The opportunity shall present themselves. Your quote will be favored above others. Hallelujah. God is going to make a way for you where there seems to be no way. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, thank you for your hand of blessing on your saints. I release a divine mantle of many colors. And I thank you, my Father, that you watch over your word to perform it for each and every saint. In the mighty name of Jesus, we release open doors and opportunities. And I thank you, Father, that this shall be a year of fruitfulness. This shall be a year of increase, of advance, of restoration, of restitution and blessing. For those who are, who are looking to God for healing, I heal you in the name of Jesus. I release the same anointing that raised Christ from the dead to quicken your mortal body, to raise you up. And I declare health in the mighty name of Jesus. I bless you, my beautiful church. I love each and every one of you, and we're looking forward to the day where we can come together again and praise and worship our God. Love you. God bless you. And I've got one more thing to say. Sunday was great, but Monday is better. <laughs> God bless you. We are so glad that you joined us for the service today. And I remind you that the Bible says we take the word of God mixed with faith and it prospers us. And I pray today that God's word would prosper in your life as you apply it. Not just being a forgetful hearer, but doers of the word living in the promise of God. So we bless you today. And I want to invite those of you who do not know our Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. He came and he died on the cross 
for you and for me. He did not die for his own sin. He was the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And his blood was shed for your soul. And God loves you. And today, if you'll call on the name of Jesus, you shall be saved. You believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead? Then confess that today. Believe in him as your savior. And you will get to know this wonderful Lord. I want to lead you today in a short prayer. And I want you to pray this prayer from your heart. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ to be my savior, to pay my price, to shed his blood. I believe that by the blood of Jesus, my sins are washed away. I believe that Jesus is your son, the Redeemer sent for me. Lord Jesus, I confess you today as my Lord and Savior, and I give my life to you. Amen. Well, friend, God bless you. I encourage you to follow through on that. Find a church closest to you. If you're in Durban, this is Durban Christian Center. You're most welcome to join us. Find us on the website. If you're in another city, there's a church close to you. Call on Jesus. Take your Bible. Start reading in the book of John. And God will lead you into the full knowledge of Jesus Christ. So, from all of us here at Durban Christian Center, God bless you. And remember, Jesus loves you.